top of the morning. Uh, it's Rob Murray here from Intrigue Media. Uh, I've uh, been doing a lot of I'm in a Cars uh, this year, which has been a ton of fun. Uh, hopefully you've had a chance to follow some of the interviews because there's been some gems of late and there's obviously some more coming. Uh, but I wanted to just take a minute and kind of get back to doing a couple on my own because uh, I think there's some kind of neat topical ideas that we can go through to try to help you be a little bit uh, more efficient, maybe a bit more productive when it comes to how you go about marketing, uh, not only for uh, new customers, uh, but also for engaging your current customer base and for maybe even looking at how do you recruit good team members. So uh, the idea is pretty simple and once you hear it, I mean you might already have heard it and this will just be a reinforcement if you haven't heard about it, once you hear it, it's kind of uh, intuitive, uh, but a lot of times I find people kind of miss this and it's just really around this idea that uh, a lot of marketing that I see uh, out in the marketplace whether it's through social or uh, through you know search or even in you know print advertising or anything that you're doing out of home uh, magazines uh, whether it's billboards whatever it might be uh, it's really uh, a lot of it is done around driving a sale so the idea of an offer and saying hey come buy this and this is what we sell and it's, it's not the end of the world because letting people know that you're there, that you exist, and that you have something of value for them is obviously a, a good start. Um, but something to keep in mind, and this is the concept of the, the kind of takeaway for today, is that not everybody in the market, meaning that people that are looking for something, are ready to purchase. And so there's a kind of a three-part breakdown of something you can keep in mind uh, to kind of validate the way you're going to market uh, that might help you out. And the idea starts with this. So if you consider a... Um, you know, a, 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 a buyer's journey or a, a marketing funnel where you have the top of the funnel with a lot of people up here who maybe are aware that they have a problem and they're trying to figure out whether or not they want to solve it. And then you got the middle of the funnel where just people trying to figure out, you know, what to buy, how to buy it, um, things to look for, reviews, that type of stuff. And then the very bottom of the funnel, people actually looking to make a purchase, requesting a quote, getting a price, coming through your door, whatever that might look like. And so what I was referring to earlier was that the bottom of the funnel is where we typically see a lot of advertising. Um, this fence is on sale, come buy it now. Or, um, hey, we're open and, and uh, until Sunday we've got this you know special on, whatever that might be, and, which is great. But a lot of people miss the middle of the funnel and the top of the funnel. And so we, we talk about this and lots of other people talk about this. So tofu, top of the funnel, mofu, middle of the funnel, and bofu, bottom of the funnel. And the idea is to align with a whole bunch of uh, pieces of content and marketing materials for people that are at different parts of the buyer funnel. So when it comes to tofu, top of the funnel, what are some of the things that you can do to you know, help build some trust? And this is all about the idea that we live in a society of people that hate to be sold and love to buy. So the question becomes, well, how do we create an environment of purchase instead of an environment of sale? And that's worth repeating. We live in a society of people that hate to be sold and love to buy. So you've probably been on a trip maybe down south or maybe you've even been to uh, you know, a tech store looking to buy a flat screen TV and you're, you're thinking about this awesome TV and you found one and then someone comes and talks to you about the warranty. You know, typically we're like, ah, I just, you know, I don't really want to talk about that. I just want to get a TV. Or you walk through a retail outlet and you've got cash in your pocket. You know what you're going to go buy and someone comes up to you and says, can I help you? And you say, no, no, thanks. I'm just looking. And there's just this innate programming that we've got that we just don't want to be sold stuff. So the question becomes again, how do we create an environment of purchase instead of an environment of sale? And that's where the tofu, top of the funnel, and mofu, middle of the funnel, really become important when it comes to marketing and engaging current customers. So tofu, what can you do to start marketing yourself to help people understand how to look at their problem and look at the solutions that exist? The number one thing that we talk to people about is around leveraging frequently asked questions. So. Typically, if you're running a business, you're getting questions from potential customers or from current customers, and that can vary from anything from as simple as, well, how much does it cost, to does it come in a certain color, or is there any myths or, hey, you know, is there any best practices on installing X, whatever that might look like. And the best way to find frequently asked questions is a couple of ways. One, you can mind your frontline staff. What kind of questions are you getting on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, frequently more than anybody, any other questions? You can also look into your email, look into your inbox. What kind of questions have you been getting from your customers? Take those questions and answer them. And they're really good if you use a blog post or a video like I'm doing right now um, to help people understand 
the answers so frequently asked questions. Because the idea is, if they're asking you those questions, they're probably asking someone else, and more than likely, they're Googling those questions. And it turns out, if you blog with a headline or a title of a question, uh, especially locally, you'll get found really well on search. But then you can also use those blog posts or videos and put them into social media, you can put them into your email newsletter, you can even put them into print magazines or even broadcast radio or TV. So frequently asked questions is a good start. There's a whole bunch of other um, ideas on how you can go about using uh, top of the funnel marketing. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can let me know or call Intrigue Media. Um, MoFu, so middle of the funnel, what's that all about? Um, really the key with the middle of the funnel is to identify um, different aspects of how to buy your stuff, whether it's your stuff or somebody else's stuff, but the stuff in your space. And so like typically you can look at things like a buyer's guide. You know, here's the top three things to look for when purchasing XYZ. Or three things to keep in mind, or here's five questions you wanna ask to make sure you're working with somebody who's reputable and knows what they're doing. But the idea is you're really focusing on giving people the information to make a good purchase decision. And now you can do this with uh, downloads or you can do it with uh, like white papers, uh, reports, or you can just do it with straight content like we were talking about earlier, blogs and, and, and videos. So, you know, th those are just one, one example of, uh, of middle of the funnel content. But really help people understand how to buy what they're buying. Because here's the thing, if you're in the business, you've been selling that thing or that things or those services uh, like hundreds of times, maybe thousands of times, every week, every month, every year. And the consumers may be looking at it, buying it for the first time or maybe the second time. They're, they're not doing it every single day, so they don't necessarily have all the information um, that they need to make a really good decision. And you can arm them with that. That does two things. One, it helps them avoid maybe shady businesses that are in the same category as you, but it also positions you as a trusted expert and advisor. And you're really starting to build trust because you're not asking them for the sale, you're just giving them the information to make a good decision. And this comes back to the idea of creating an environment of purchase instead of creating an environment of sale. Now, once you've got some top of the funnel content, you've got some middle of the funnel content, you're starting to address more of the marketplace that's actually in market, depending on where they are in terms of their buyer decision. But you're really starting to help people walk through that marketing funnel. And then when you get into the bottom of the funnel, this is where you get into your calls to action. So come in today and buy this. Here's an offer that's gonna be extended until this date. Um, here's a two for one or whatever it might be. It doesn't have to be a discount. It can even just be like, hey, it's for sale. Come by, get a quote, get pricing, whatever you want it to be. But your call to action's on the bottom of the funnel. Now, earlier in the conversation, I was talking about the idea of marketing not only to new customers, but also to current customers and maybe even team members. So when it comes to uh, team members, the top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, and bottom of the funnel still works because mo more often than not, and by more, I mean like essentially all the time, I see people that are going out into the labor market looking for help with a job posting saying we're hiring. And which is great, again, same thing, but that's the bottom of the funnel when it comes to recruiting. And so what are you doing currently with top of the funnel and middle of the funnel? And what kind of channels or content are you putting out into the marketplace for people that might have a job, they're looking for alternatives, and they find you and they wanna kinda of learn what it's like to work with you. So, you know, for Intrigue, for example, if you check out our Instagram account, Intrigue Media, you, you'll see a ton of content all around our office. And our Intrigue uh, Instagram account is really designed to help people understand what it's like to work at our office. We also do information sessions every quarter. So once every three or four months, we invite people that are looking at potentially working at Intrigue. They might have current jobs already. They might have applied earlier, whatever it might be to come in for an hour and a half, sometimes two hours, and we do the day in life of Intrigue Media, and we facilitate a session to help people understand with a lot of transparency what it's like to work at Intrigue, what we're all about, what our vision is, and what we're trying to accomplish. Then the bottom of the funnel, or the middle of the funnel, is, is like an information session, that's what I'm talking about. The bottom of the funnel is what we you know, see all the time, which is recruitment posts. So that, that's kind of how the marketing funnel can also work as a recruitment funnel. Same concept though, top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel. The other thing to keep in mind though is that just because someone's purchased doesn't mean that they're done. And so, you know, it's really interesting to see a visual, instead of looking at a marketing funnel that's like vertical like this, you look at it on its side. And then on the, on the other side, you look at it like this. So it ends up being like two cones that come together. So once someone's purchased from you, then what are we doing to get them onboarded as a client? What are we doing to get them delighted as a client? What are we doing to get them to buy more? And then what are we doing to get them to advocate and tell other people about us? And that's just a quick little idea. I'll touch on it in another video. But the idea is that the marketing funnel doesn't necessarily stop at the customer purchase. What are we doing to engage that customer once they've come on board so we can get them to advocate as the you know kind of end goal to tell other people about us and tell other people about you about how great you are and how much they love your stuff. So that's just a quick little video on, on looking at marketing, maybe a little bit different or reinforcing what you already know to be true. And if you have any questions about this, by all means, you can give me a shout. You can text me on LinkedIn, uh, Robert Murray. Uh, you can also give our, our office a shout. Um, it's 519-265-4933, but you can just Google uh, Intrigue Media. 
and uh, we'd be happy to have a conversation. All right, thanks, guys. Hope it helps. See ya.